This place is heavily guarded. This area is off limits. Yeah. <sighs> 
Sætti mark á markaði. Sættur minni ráði, sé svo á.
Come here! Yeah. Uh, 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 
by the campfire, skate on the ice, buy a lean horse and a tempered sword. Do these things and be pleased with your lot. Nice pig. Pig? You ignoramus. Let you trot us as a hog. And the most unique and singular beauty. <laughs> Should I leave you two alone? Please do. And not for the reasons you are insinuating. You are confusing her delicate nose with your earthy stench. Tuh. <laughs> Some like my smell. So she's a mushroom hog. I've heard of such rare beasts. Mushrooms? She sniffs out treasure. Treasure? Epping Forest is full of it, and Lady Trotters finds it. Ah! She has to scent! Come, I'll show you! There you go, my lovely. Find us riches, and you shall have sweet red berries for supper. Bandits leave them lying around, and ladies drawn to their own holy stench. Oh, I lost cause. I'm going for a nap. If Lady runs off, follow her, would you? What she finds, we'll share. The socks are all yours. Run, lady! Find me something heavy and rich! A fine horde. Good Lady Trudders, you are the best of hawks. Go, Lady Trudders! Run like Fenrir's on your heels! You are a beast to rival Gullinborsti, Freya's beloved golden boar. Did the dwarves make you too? What I wouldn't do for a beast as clever as you are. Nasty smelly thugs won't bother you anymore, you know. Ah. Tied up. A wee misunderstanding between myself and the good folk of the hamlets hereabouts. Your name, good kin? I'm Eivor of the Raven Clan. 
And now I've freed you, so go about your business. Wait! May I inquire? The dulcet timbre of your voice, the godlike strength of your gait. You are a warrior, yes? A lone skiff bobbing on the sea of opportunity. Wait, what is that on the horizon? Adventure! I, um... The stars prophesied our meeting. I am the glee woman Aswig the Mellifluous. You have heard of me? No matter. Destiny has made you my muse. I shall follow you, record your great deeds with poetry. This will not make great poetry, Eivor. Fleet of foot and long of gait. Oh, Eivor, do I pray to your fate. This will not make great poetry, Eivor. Do something. Eivor charges up her bow. Watch the arrow go and go. Eivor gives the Saxons grief. Hack and slash them. Break their teeth. Eivor running from the past with mighty speed to flabbergast. This will not make great poetry, Eivor. Do something. Anything. Enough. Stop following me. I cannot, for walking in your footsteps has let me sup at the cup of inspiration. You are my life's great purpose. Enough. I won't listen to your blabber anymore. First there was a famine, and now look here, a feast. Fare thee well, Eivor of the Raven Clan. Your exploits will live on in me. Now I thank you, but please, take your leave. Fare thee well, brave hero. Perhaps we will meet again. Gods, I hope not. Please, my love, you must forgive me. I cannot sleep. I cannot eat. Who do you speak to? There's no one here. We are together now, wife. You, you will never leave my side, whispering in my ear like a moth's wings. Where is that wailing coming from? It's as if the walls are crying out in anguish. You! You blew upon the threads and they severed. She, she is gone. Dust and bones! Dust and bones! You have done some mischief here. I can smell the sword. I know a few things about love. Do you? Or did you hear the chime of my coin purse? Does it matter? No. Not when the village children pelt my door with vegetables, call me old maid and witch. You need someone to protect you. From children. Leave your scorn. There is a man. We have been secretly betrothed for years. But his father refuses our union. So you will kidnap him and make it look good. His house is near here, surrounded by red flowers. Oh, wait. I will kidnap him? You will know my love by his red hair. And try not to kill his father. That will put a damper on our happy day. I will roast him a fat hen. Or a stew. Would he like that? Surrounded by red flowers. This must be her love's house. I am here from your love. Who are you? That's the spirit. Let us make your father believe the fiction. Why? 
What? What is this? I, the Dread Viking Eivor, have come to steal your sons. Saints, preserve us! The heathens have come to slaughter us in our beds! Please! Please! That's it. Keep up the act. Oh! Boy, ain't! You'll be with her soon. My love, all will be well. Well, wait. So this boy is your lover, or no? He will be. I have watched him for many turns of the sun. And now he will know of my burning love. Thanks to you. You watched me? That is so strange and unnatural. Romantic. That you would go to such lengths to win my heart. It touches me. In places I cannot speak of. You have my thanks, Dane. Take your reward and leave us. Plow me, soft one. Scythe the weeds from my field. This looks like an old cellar. Yeah, reeks of stale wine. Are those barrels still full? A shaft. I can see something at the bottom, but it's out of my reach.
The wine has filled the shaft bearing my prize with it. I should be able to reach it now. Drinking horn. It looks valuable. A good find, I think. Good morrow! Good morrow! I stand here on behalf of the Lady Elette of Colchester, famed mistress of the flight. Do you seek an audience? I have never heard of her. Based on your appearance, I am thoroughly unsurprised. Nevertheless, do you wish to challenge her? I do. Foolish. Yet to be graced by her presence may balance the pain of the loss you will most assuredly suffer. Lady Elette! You are called to the field of flighting. Ah, oh, a peasant. Come for a sound flighting. Please, place your paltry bet. Take this. Hmm. A pittance. But I accept on the lady's behalf. She will begin. I have heard much about you, and none of it good. You've the softness and brains of a sheep. My verses are known all across this great land. For they put all who hear them to sleep. Not bad. Oh, you think you're so clever, I'm almost impressed that you managed to blurt something out. Yet I worry our skills are too deeply mismatched. I'll defeat you and banish all doubt. <laughs> Lucky. I should almost take pity on one so bereft, of beauty, of wit, and of skill. But instead, I'll persist till you beg me to stop. Lend a soul, for your words make me ill. Where did you steal that one from? Thus the Lady Alette has been beaten at last, by the one she was foolish to doubt. Now her herald must give me the sum of my bet. While Alette can but stand there and pout. Oh, pay what is due and send this peasant away. I grow weary. Of course, milady. Take your winnings, you have earned them. Thank you. Why are you praying here? We pray for strength to face the one within that cave. A devil in man's form who commands the beasts themselves. Many times we have seen him feeding the wild beasts and speaking with them. Even the wolves do not savage him. Are you sure? You Christians are quick to name devil that which you do not understand. The birds in this wood are restless and swift to attack. Only yesterday, a fox snatched a babe from its crib. Have no doubt, he who walks backwards is among us. Either he will come out of there, or we will go in. Have a care, stranger. Do not... That's the lair of the man of the beast. You keep company with the bear. Are you as the monk says? The animals be my friends. I hear them, and they hear me. They hurt this one, now they want to hurt me. But you have set your beasts on people before. Them's that hurt my friends get hurt. But I never hurt no baby. You have only been defending those you love. Stay here and tend to your friend. I will see to the monks outside. Don't kill them. Don't want that. Scare them off. It's the animals they fear, remember? Okay, I'll 
Remus set Adas Salata Merum, Caritas et Pidum, Jus set Vossum Terra et Condisa. I do not know if you are what they say you are, but I've seen to your tormentors. I laid about them with my blade. Blood brings blood. More will come. Things worse now. Eowyn and I better go somewhere else. I did what I could. Farewell then, and good fortune. the wailing we are a band of bards ahead of our time musical prodigies even but that madman the self-proclaimed bishop of the ruins is our biggest critic he calls our playing the devil's bagpipes that strange instrument made of bladder and bone it does wheeze like an old woman he drives away our audience with his doom knelling all we want is to bring a little joy to this jilted generation Worthy aim. Maybe he needs convincing of your talents. You would volunteer? Ah, oh, you are a lover of fine music. This is surely an omen. Ah, oh, my ears are bleeding! Why not let the boy play music? He brings pleasure to the people. Music is the devil's wind breaking. Foul and rancid. I, as the Bishop of the Ruins, will not stand for it. Bishop of the Ruins? Is this title Alfred given? It is God given. He spoke to me as I stood one night pissing against the stones. I am his instrument to stamp out the devil's tune. Then you and I must disagree. Singulus Reapus Longe. Dot the priest! Smack my bishop! You have done us a great service. I will compose this day into song. Farewell. May you continue to make merry harmonies. Smack my bishop! Smack my bishop! What are you doing here in the middle of nowhere? Ah, a visitor for Chad the Bewilderer, the most radiant and rakish riddler. Do you have the wits to best me? There is cake in it if you do. For cake? I will answer any mind tease you have for me. My head is forged with the hammer, hurt with sharp tools, smoothed by files. I take in my mouth what is set before me. Iron is forged with tools, and a keyhole could be the mouth of a door. A lock and key? Wonderful! Your wit sparkles! But still, another one. I saw a strange thing, wonderful of shape, singing in a tavern. 
Its beak underneath stood upon splayed legs that cannot walk. Something that sings. A musical instrument. The bladder that winds and wheezes through pipes. Backpipes. Very good. A tricky one that few but the sharpest needles can sew. Now, the final test. With my roof of tears, I am driven far and wide on my avenging path. When I shake the forest, I rumble the fruit from the trees. Rain covers the earth like a roof, and the rumble of thunder and lightning can shake acorns from a branch. A storm. You are brighter than the sky, Lantern. Your wit outshone my words, and such a feat deserves three cakes. But unfortunately, I do not have any. So the cake was a lie? Do not pout. Have a reward much more worthy of your talents. Goodbye, Chad. Your riddles were a fun diversion. Stay a while, read some more of my scribblings. I do not get many visitors. Your... Pretty flowers will get her to open the door. The other side must be barred. So you have lured me in. Explain yourself. It's just been a while since anyone passed this way, and I wanted to be sure you would stay and visit. By pretending to be a pretty young maid. My mother used to tell me stories. Legends of a forgotten king, of magic swords rising from misty lake waters. There was often a fair maiden, lonely and locked away. I fell in love with that sweet fantasy. So much more romantic than a pathetic man, whiling away the hours until death. A sad shadow play. So where is your mother now? Dead. These last three years and buried under the flowers she loved. I wanted to move on, but I cannot bear to leave her. Your mother would not want you to be so love-starved. Leave this house of grief. You are right. She was always so happy, laughing and singing. It would break her heart to see me so forlorn. I'll not let sentimentality be the shackles of my soul. I will find work in the village, even meet a girl, and start my own family. And tell them stories of magic heroes and fair maidens. Thank you, stranger. You have given me a glimpse of a sweeter life. This was hers. Take it, for it saddens me to look on. I hope you find what you're looking for. Farewell. I'm glad you stopped by. It brought me some comfort.
Sorga if it's sweet and fair, and I'm a rest of it. Was a rest. Push bail. Blessing.
curse is lifted. Check. 